as a teacher there is just so much to do and it can be really easy to get carried away and to just overthink everything and waste time faffing doing the things that are not that important. Today I'm going to let you in on my best tips and advice for saving time as a teacher. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you didn't already know, then my name is Miss Ross and I am a recently qualified Scottish primary teacher. We all know that teacher workload is a huge issue. If you don't work out the right work-life balance, then your well-being can really suffer. It's so bizarre to me that teachers are known for working well over their contracted hours. And trust me, I completed my NQT last year, so I know how overwhelming and stressful it can all become. Your time is golden. My first tip for saving time as a teacher is trying to get as much done as possible during the school day as you can. Marking pupil work or putting up displays. Try to encourage your pupils to be as independent as possible. This obviously depends on their age as well but just try and think about how you can train your pupils to be a little bit more independent so that that frees up some time for you to get on with other jobs. Now this isn't possible every single lesson but at certain points during the day especially if they have a get busy task when they come in first thing in the morning that will free up some time for you to organize yourself. For example if pupils are doing a mental maths worksheet every day? Is there an opportunity for that to be self-marked by the pupils themselves? Can pupils that are finished their work help you to cut out resources so that that saves you doing it yourself later on? A big part of that is assigning classroom jobs. It can be so easy to get into a pattern of just doing things yourself because you want them done a certain way, like handing out the jotters, handing out resources, sharpening pencils, but you need to train your pupils to be independent and to do these things to the expected standard by themselves. Even something really simple, like if there's a pupil that's normally in early in the morning, getting them to log into the computers for you, getting them to sharpen pencils, they might seem like small and significant tasks, but they do just save a lot of time in the grand scheme of things. It promotes responsibility and it promotes that sense of community that everyone is working together to have the ideal classroom environment. Plus, it frees up time for you to be getting on with other more important things. The second tip kind of runs alongside that one and that is to encourage pupils to file and sort their own work. I don't know about you, but a lot of my time in the classroom is spent picking up things after my pupils, trying to organise things and tidy up. Again, that's going to depend on the stage of pupils that you're teaching, but right now I'm teaching primary seven, which is the oldest pupils in the primary school, and I would expect them to be able to file away any work that I've marked into the appropriate folders to save me the time of doing it after school, because that's something that they are quite capable of doing. I've touched on this in previous videos, but just ensure that everything in your classroom has a space. In some classrooms I've worked in, pupils have name trays with their names on them, and that's where all of their work is filed away once it's been marked. You don't want to be disorganised, and waste time having to look for things. So definitely make sure you've got an organised system in your class and pupils can also take a little bit of responsibility to make sure things are in the right place. My next tip is another obvious one that we hear all the time. Make sure you use ready-made resources, especially as a starter for 10 if you've got a particularly busy week. The reality is that not every lesson throughout the week is going to be an outstanding one and it's okay sometimes to give pupils a textbook task or something that's pre-made to do. Be sure to, first of all, look and see what the school already has before you turn to looking for things online. Make sure you try and use things that are pick up and go that are going to save you time. Be wary of spending hours looking for the right resource. When you are planning a lesson, you should be constantly thinking, what is the purpose of me doing this? You know, what is it that the pupils are going to get out of this? Is it worth my while? Will this resource actually help pupils to achieve the learning intention. Making sure that it's really fun and engaging and looks really pretty is not always the top priority. My next tip is to try and get yourself organised in advance to save time later down the line. What I mean by that is making up work booklets for example. If you're using the same kind of mental math booklet each week rather than photocopying it every single Friday morning, try and photocopy loads of pages in advance, staple it as a little booklet and then it means it's already pre-prepared so each week you just need to get it out of the drawer um, and it's already sitting ready to go. Can you have a booklet made up of handwriting worksheets or mental maths tasks or even like your early finisher tasks for people to turn to if they're finished their work? I actually saw this 
this tip from TikTok and it is having a ready-made resource folder. So effectively having a ring binder full of master copies for worksheets and activities already made that you've tried and tested. This is a habit that I've been trying to get into this year especially and anytime I am printing out a resource or a worksheet I'm making sure that I have an additional master copy that I can put into my master copy folder and you can obviously arrange this by different curricular areas or topics as well just so that they've got hard copies of those and good to go if you ever are revisiting that area again. And the same kind of goes for having your digital resources organised. Over my time at uni I have been compiling all of my resources onto an external hard drive which is organised by the different levels and curricular areas. It just saves so much time if you already have your tried and tested PowerPoints and lesson materials saved digitally as well as having hard copies for things as well. But the good thing about digitally is that you can access them from anywhere without you know needing to cart around loads of big folders full of stuff. But I have seen a lot of teachers putting together folders of all of their art resources when they're making like templates and things for art activities. Any example pieces that they've made up they have held onto those in a big folder full of poly pockets um, which I thought was a really great idea and if you're looking for inspiration you could always go back to your big art folder and have a look and see what you've done in the past. Because as a teacher you teach so many different lessons over the course of a week or a school year and it can be hard to remember all of it. That's why I definitely recommend having a teacher Instagram so that you can track some of your favourite lessons that you've done, you know, taking photos and uploading it onto your feed. It's a really great way to record different things that you've gotten up to during your teaching career but also as well as seeing ideas and inspiration from other teachers as well. Speaking of being prepared in advance with things like your photocopying, this year in my classroom I made sure to have days of the week drawers for each of the five days of the school week and then throughout the week I make sure I am organised in advance for my lessons and anything that I photocopied I will put them into the relevant drawers so that I'm organised for all of my lessons of the week. Especially on a Friday I like to make sure I'm organised for the following Monday which is a really difficult habit to get into but it's just really nice to have that peace of mind. It's just a lot more stressful if you're trying to organise yourself on the day. There have been occasions in the past where I've been queuing up at the photocopier first thing on a Monday morning, feeling disorganised, feeling stressed so it's just really nice for that peace of mind being organised in advance. Another lesson that comes from that is to your times at the photocopier wisely. My next piece of advice is to time block your to-do list. Set yourself clear deadlines to get jobs done and try your very best to stick to it. I make sure to thoroughly plan my time before and after school to make sure I use it as wisely and efficiently as possible. I know how easy after a hard day it can be to go next door and chat to your stage partner about their day and you know the next thing you know you look at the clock and an hour's passed and you've just been standing chatting. Usually I do have a kind of weekly overview to do list of everything I would like to try and achieve that week and then I break it down into my daily to-do list of things I want to try and get done in my time before and after school and during the day as well like I said earlier on try and get as many things done as you possibly can while you're actually in the classroom with the children. As a teacher there is just so much to do and it can be really easy to get carried away and to just overthink everything and waste time faffing doing the things that are not that important. Parkinson's law actually states that a task will expand to fit the time that you have enabled it to have. So if you say you know you're going to spend three hours planning then you could quite easily spend three hours planning. So make sure you set quite strict deadlines and you know if you really are motivated to get it done then they will get done in that time. As we know I am a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to lesson planning and I have learned the hard way to set really strict deadlines so that I don't get carried away and um, so that is definitely one of my biggest tips for time saving. My next tip is to collaborate, don't go it alone. If you are lucky enough to have a stage partner then you know share the load a little bit and each of you plan a different aspect of the day so that the job gets done a lot quicker. Also if you do have a teaching assistant make sure you plan for your time with them as wisely as possible so that they can be used to help you get to all of those jobs on your to-do list that you never seem to have time to get around to doing. In my first year of teaching I was so reluctant to make use of my teaching assistant to do those types of jobs for me. It can be so easy just to say oh no I'll just I'll just get that done myself after school. So make sure you've got an extra little to-do list that you can pass on to your teaching assistant when they're in the room and I think that's just about it for my time saving tips. If you guys have any tips of your own then I would absolutely love to hear them because I'm always looking for ways to save time as a teacher. If you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to my channel for other teaching related content. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!